Hi, welcome to the 12th section of the ProtoPy course. This one is going to be interesting because we're going to create a really cool card animation that starts in one screen and jump to a second one. And then we're going to manage the way it's going to start, it's going to reset, it's going to continue and then jump to another screen. And the way that we're going to jump is to detect the animation completion using range. So with the Y position, then we jump to the second screen and then we can reset the scene. And on that scene, we manage the animations using start and tap. And then using range again, we jump back, but this time not resetting the scene. So there's a bit of tricks going on here and I'm going to explain all of that stuff. First, let's open Sketch. We're gonna need both the home and the cards artboards. So we're gonna go and create a new pie. Then we're gonna import from Sketch the home at 3x. Then we'll create a new scene and import cards at 3x. Let's go back to home. This is where we're gonna start the animation. The idea here is that when we click on this card, these two other cards are gonna hide and we're gonna also hide this using a background opacity. And then these ones are gonna move to the left and this one is going to move to the right. Let's start by creating the background. So shape rectangle. I'm gonna put that right underneath the three cards. Rename this to background, set the height as well as the width to 100% and set the fill to the color of the background. By default, it's going to have opacity zero. And then I'm gonna click on the card one and add a trigger for tap. The first thing I'm going to animate is the card two using move. And basically I wanna animate roughly here. So I'm gonna use a specific positioning of the Y. Right now it's at 112. I just need to move by about 12, so it's gonna be 100. If I click here, it's gonna hide the second card. I'm gonna do the same for the third card using move and move to 100 as well. Then I'm gonna select the background and do a opacity animation. Set the opacity to 100. For the avatar, select the avatar, use move, we're gonna move by this time and using the X position, so horizontal, minus 100. The same for the search icon, move by minus 100 pixel. Then the add button, move by plus 100. So moving to is when you have a specific position Moving by is when you add or subtract a certain amount of pixels to the X or Y position. So I'm just gonna move this one minus 100, minus 100, plus 100. So now if I click here, you can see these goes to the left, this one goes to the right, the cards go and hide behind the card one and then the background sets 100% opacity. So when you do a transition to another screen and you want that transition to be very natural, you need to find a common layer. And in this case, the common layer is the first card. That's what both these artboards are sharing. So when I have this position right here, I can now just jump to the second screen and from that second screen, I'm going to set up the layers in that second screen to look very similar to what I have right here. But first of all, we need to jump to the second screen. In order to do that, we have to detect the animation completion. Only when my animation is over that I want to jump to the second screen. So I'm going to detect at which position one of my layers is going to reach to declare that this is when the animation is complete. In this case, I can say, okay, when the card three has reached 
position 100 in terms of Y, then I know for a fact that my animations are complete and I'm ready to jump to the second screen. With car 3 selected, I'm going to add a trigger called range. Range allows me to use an object property such as scroll, or in this case, I'm going to use the Y position of car 3 and say, well, is this greater or equal? Is it less or equal? Is it between two values or outside of two values? And if that's the case, then I can do my response. And in this case, it's going to be a jump. So card three for the Y position. So Y position of card three is less or equal to that value, which is 100. It cannot be the opposite because the opposite would be greater or equal to 100. And by default, it's at 122 which is greater than 100. So I do need to do less or equal than 100. If that's the case, then now we can jump to the second scene. You'll see that when I click, it jumps right away to the second scene. I'm gonna go to the second scene and I'm gonna start preparing the start positions so that it fits exactly the way it looks when the first screen's animations are over. The question is, what do we need to do here? First of all, we need to hide the done and this icon right here. Then we need to move these two cards to this position so that at this point, it's going to hide and then animate back to these positions. It's gonna look really good. So we'll begin with the start trigger and then we're going to select the done, start with opacity to zero, the button opacity to zero, and then the card two opacity to zero as well, and card three opacity to zero. For the card two, we're going to move as well. And then we're going to use the Y position roughly here, which is 85. So click on move, set the Y position to 85. And then card three is the same. So move Y position to 85. So you can see at start, it looks like this. What we need to do is to use all of these positions as starting positions and then we're going to use reset to animate back to the state of the second scene so for each of these layers i'm going to set a reset so done button card two and then card three as well what this means is that when I'm jumping from the first scene, I'm going to have these states first, and then finally I'm going to animate to the way that this scene looks like. Let me change the duration a little bit for the done and the button. I'm gonna make this transparency a little bit slower. And then for the card, since I'm using a move, I like to use spring and you can use, let's say, a tension of 200. So it's gonna look roughly like this. Now, if I wanna test the animation from the first scene, I can click on the card and then it's gonna jump to the second scene. Now, you will notice that at the very end of this animation, it kind of flash. So to fix this, I'm going to have to go back to the second scene and then on the start, it has an option that says start after jump so it needs to wait for the jump to be over to apply these states and animation i'm going to change this to start with jump and if you do that it should fix your problem no more flash okay so let's head back to the second scene and then add a trigger for the done button 
it's going to be a tab and we'll simply animate back to the way that we set up the start position. So I'm gonna copy these six responses, including four opacity and two move, copy, go to tab and paste. Instead of using a zero duration, I'm going to set 0.3 so that the animation is not going to be instant. Then we're gonna select card three and add a range trigger and then detect the animation completion. But one problem is that the Y position 85 is exactly as the Y position here at start. So it might conflict with this as an animation completion at start. So what we're gonna do is select the card three and instead of moving on tab to 85, I'm going to set to 84. So I'm gonna use this 84 Y position for my range so that the Y position of car three is smaller or equal to 84. I know it can be a little bit confusing, but this is very similar to the way you do in code whenever you do a comparison of values. And so ProtoPy is not that different from coding, except that you don't have to code at all. So for my response, I'm going to add a jump to scene one. Okay, now we're ready to test the animation back and forth between the screens. Click done, goes here, it's kind of good. And then I come back and I notice that I'm blocked right here. So what you need to understand is that first of all, we are on the second scene. You can see that by the dollar sign number. But what's happening is that the scene is not being reset every time that it jumps back and forth the animation goes to a certain state and then it stays there. So whenever you come back to that scene, it stays the same way. There's an option that says reset the selected scene and we need to do that from the first scene. So we need to click on jump and when the animation is over, we want to always reset the second scene. So this will fix our issue. So I come back. But the problem is it does not fix my other issue, which is on the first screen, my animation is not being reset. So now in my first scene, I'm going to have to set sort of the same animation states to make sure that it's going to come back to the way it was. So I'm gonna select card two, reset, card three, reset, background, reset, avatar, reset, search, reset, and finally add, reset. And also it's very important to set restart every time. Now I'm going to test, go to the second scene, comes back and then runs this animation every single time so that I can move back and forth every single time. So there are two ways to reset your animations to the way it looks by default. We can use start, but you have to click restart every single time and then you do the resets. Or you can use the jump and then you do reset the selected scene. Managing these scenes and resetting the animations takes a bit of practice, especially when you start an animation and you leave it hanging so that it looks exactly like the second screen you have to reset it somehow. But my objective for this section is to show you that it is possible to use different techniques such as resetting the start and resetting the layers and also resetting the scene entirely from the jump. There's also another small detail that we learned, which was that with the start, you can start with or after jump and that makes a huge difference in the way that it flashes the state before the animation but otherwise the most important lesson here is that we learn how to use the range so that we can detect the values of my animation to see if it's completed or not and if it is then i can do a response like the jump you might have noticed that ProtoPy is very, very powerful if you go very deep with the tool. 
And I think that's really good news because you can create extremely high fidelity prototypes that are very close to the real app. In the next session, we're going to learn about Variable, which is another extremely powerful tool in Protopie. And also we're gonna learn how to detect the mouse position and use that to create a very cool parallax effect. So I hope to see you in the next session.